So, yeah, it's a real honor to be talking today at MageConf. Um, as I said, I'm the C CTO at Shiro Commerce. I'm a Gento master and a huge behavioral driven development and test driven development development advocate. And you can follow me on Twitter at Jay Cowie or on all the Slack channels that we've got around available to us. So if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this talk, it's this sentence. And it's the process of learning effective test driven development is the process of learning how to build a more modular application. Now that's quite interesting, especially the words modular application. When I've talked to people in the past about test driven development, we often feel that test driven development is a testing framework. It's all about how you develop tests, how you make test automation, but Test-driven development is actually a really sneaky design tool. By creating test-driven development processes, you're actually building modular applications. And I want to look at some of the reasons why we don't test. And this was compiled from people on Twitter and some of the experiences. But the common reasons for not testing our code are that we don't have the budget or the time. Testing starts to slow us down. We've got PMs and clients shouting at us. They want features. They don't want tests. We've not had the training. It starts to get in the way. We're fighting more with code that we're not sure about for testing than we are writing production code. Our clients won't pay for it. The tests become out of date and we end up writing more test code than we do having to write production code. They slow us down and hold us back. So we then stop running the test suite and we just deploy to production. And we start to ship first, but test later. And I really believe from all of these reasons, we can break it down into three groups. Obviously, you've got time. You've then got knowledge. How do you test? And you've got the understanding, which is why should you test? And if we start to look at time in more detail, what I find really interesting, and this data is exaggerated, but it reflects the reality of projects. But if you start a brand new Greenfield project, you don't include test-driven development you find that your first feature is very quick. You've got no other codes, no modules, you're creating your own project and feature. But by the time you get to features five, six, X, whatever that might be, you'll find that for a comparable feature, the time to build it is actually a lot greater. And that's because you've got coupled code, you've started to got dependencies, dependencies, Maybe the database schema or the architecture you chose is now holding you back. And you, you'll find that you spend a lot of time doing manual regression testing. You'll deploy the project to QA or UAT. And instead of being able to just look at your feature, because you've got such a wide surface area, you have to go through regression from A to B, start to finish. However, if you approach the exact same project with the exact same features using test-driven development, you will find that that first feature takes a lot longer than it would normally to build. That's purely because you're putting in place the test framework. Maybe you're working with the team to understand how we're gonna incorporate test-driven development. But over time, the same features that started to take us longer are now taking us less time. And we've got the ability to use that extra time on exploratory testing instead of having an entire army of QA testers that have to go from all the different button clicks throughout the site. They're now looking at the boundaries of our application. And by approaching that same project with test-driven development it does make it more maintainable for the long run. So if we look at the first myth of what slows us down and it says that testing slows us down, I believe that's false. If you invest in test-driven development, over time, it is guaranteed to speed you up we don't have the time. Again, if all you're doing is writing production code and having to constantly firefight, you will never have the time. But by um, paying for your test experience, building out your knowledge of test driven development, it's going to shorten delivery time, making you have more time to give value back to the client. And the one that I always laugh about is the client won't pay for it. I don't think anybody has ever gone into a restaurant and walked directly into the kitchen and said to the chef, right, chef, I want you to cook me a steak, go and get it out of the fridge, season it with salt and pepper, put it on the grill for four minutes, flip it over, two pinches of salt and pepper, leave it for six minutes and take it off the grill, put it on a plate. Once it's rested, you can then put the jacket potato on and bring it to me. 
the chef had laughed. As long as we deliver value in the most excellent way to our clients, then they don't need to know how we cook our steak. They just need to know that their steak's going to be delicious. So if we move on to knowledge then, the hard truth is that testing is incredibly hard. From my experience on every language and every framework and every project that I've worked on, testing is probably the hardest skill to learn. And I found that not only is understanding how to test hard, but the architecture can get in the way. Magento can be a very opinionated application, and it does make a lot of opinions about how you should do things, which makes it hard to test. It's a complete mind shift. Instead of you thinking about the feature that you're going to build in its entirety, you're focusing on small units of incremental value, and it's a whole team sport. It doesn't work if you've got one advocate on the team that wants to do test-driven development and writes all the test cases, but every time the rest of the team deploys a feature that hasn't got tests, it breaks his work. And Mark um, on Twitter put an interesting tweet out when he said that in Laravel, he doesn't have to use a great deal of mock objects, whereas in Magento, he found that he was writing a lot more mocks and his test suite became brittle. I believe that that's a state of Magento and it boils down to four things. Magento can be tightly coupled, especially our modules, they can be incredibly tightly coupled. Inheritance, even in this day and age, we still talk about how we use inheritance over composition. And inheritance is the drug that keeps on giving until it doesn't. And it doesn't and hurts us with our testing. Some modules, thankfully not a lot, we use the hard dependencies, instantiating with the new keyword. And we find that in Magento, our application state can leak out between the boundaries of our modules. And the traditional way of building a Magento application is that you put all of the logic into the module itself. You put the module into Magento, and it is quite easy to be able to depend on libraries and modules of modules of libraries of modules. You end up, before you know it, relying on a mageconf base, mageconf latenav, mageconf x, mageconf y, maybe a bit of Cowie module b. And before you know it, upgrading or trying to do any refactoring is really difficult. And it got me thinking about this. Has it been solved before, this problem of creating not only modular applications, but well-tested code? And it has. Alistair Cockburn, in 2005, coined the term hexagonal architecture. And hexagonal architecture has also been referred to as ports and adapters. And if you're part of the domain-driven design movement, you'll know about bounded contexts and domain objects. So hexagonal architecture, or ports and adapter, still looks like our normal Magento projects. You've got Magento in the middle. You've now got two extra areas. You've got ports and you've got the adapters. Now the port is the Magento 2 module and the adapter is the custom business logic, business domain that sits outside of Magento. It's completely decoupled. So your port is purely a Magento 2 module. It can, contains no business logic. It's got all of the app code, the Etsy module, the resource models, the grids, all of the stuff that deals with infrastructure to display data to the user or do computational grabbing of data. Whereas the adapter is your custom implementation. That's where your business logic lives. And it works because you're inverting the dependency. Instead of your code being dependent on Magento, Magento becomes in, um, dependent on your code and by nature, that means it's injectable in. It's got no concept of state. It is just pure business domain value-driven objects. And a part that not many people talk about, um, but I find quite important and quite interesting, is the bridge between the port and the adapter. I've seen some interesting implementations where they use the bridge as an API and treat the adapters and ports as microservices. So they communicate over the REST API, the GraphQL API, but the more traditional approach is to use dependency injection. So you inject your ports and adapters so that you can then use that functionality. But the bridge I like to highlight is just purely being that link between the two systems. So let's look at what types of testing we've actually got available to us so that we can start to implement this in Magento. We've got unit testing, integration, and acceptance testing. Now, I always like to think about unit testing as being inwards looking. You've got your class, your object, and when you're doing unit testing, you're purely looking to see what's inside of that object. 
Yeah, integration testing is where you're stood inside of your object looking outwards. Like how am I integrating with the pieces, the puzzles, the view outside of my object? And acceptance testing is the one that we do to make sure that it works. We put all of our nice code and functionality in a box, tie it in a bow, and it's our acceptance testing to make sure that it all works as it should. Thankfully, in the PHP world, we, our tooling has become quite mature now. We've got the likes of Codeception, Magento's test framework, a newcomer to the world is PestPHP, PHP Unit, BHAT, Cypress.io with its JavaScript implementation, but it's lightning fast, and PHP spec. But with all these tools available to us, it's really important to just not pick the one that's got the most stars on GitHub. Because right? not all tools are equal. Some of the tools require varying levels of effort and knowledge to work with them. And they need to be used in different scenarios. So if you're gonna look at behavioral driven development and you wanna use that as your testing choice, then you're gonna look at tools such as BHAT, PHP spec, Codeception, Cypress.io, they've got the concept of using BDD in their test execution. If you're looking at a more traditional unit testing, then we're looking at Codeception, PHP unit, and PEST. Now, PEST is absolutely awesome. It's very difficult, though, to get it to work with Magento. In Laravel, it works amazingly well, but because of the, dependence, the dependencies we've got on PHP unit versions, it's quite difficult to integrate. And that then leads us into what hinders our testing. Well, inheritance. Inheritance, even in 2020, is something that we still have to talk about. But the moment that your objects start inheriting from an object, an object, an object, you can't test properly. You end up creating more mocks, boundaries leak between objects, and it becomes really difficult to test it properly. Also, tie coupling. The moment that you're tying your implementation to a concrete implementation, then it's hard to decouple that. Try and use interfaces in that scenario. And the worst one is testing your code after you've wrote it. I know that it's hard to not do that, but if you start writing code and then come back to write tests afterwards, they're not gonna be very valuable. They're probably not gonna work. And we should really favor composition. I remember when we had the Magento 2 early beta in Berlin, we were talking with Anton and several other developers about composition. And we were all agreed that composition has to be the big way forward. It's a blueprint. We use service contracts in Magento. Always use composition. And you really must do composition, not only for unit testing, but to create good architectures. Because those interfaces, that ability to create composable objects describes the functionality that we're intending to build. So let's start looking at how we're now going to implement our TDD workflow. You've got three basic steps, red, green, refactor. If we're going to do this, you have to follow the steps and you have to try and keep this process nice and short lived. That's how you get the real value of this as a design tool. So you write a small failing test. You write just enough code to make that test pass. Once you've got the test passing, it's safe to refactor the code. So the aim is to go from green to working, to be able to refactor as quick as possible. That might be that your hard code values, then when you've got that test passing, you can then refactor it, add in the next red failing step so that you can make it better. And going back to that modular architecture at the, mo at the beginning, it allows you to think about design and architecture. Because you're only thinking about a small unit, maybe a, a save, an add, a remove from cart, you're not thinking about the big picture. So you're not worried about that. Like, how's this object lifecycle going to live? You just want to make sure that the small units work nicely. Refactoring is really safe because of that. You don't have to think, well, this code, I don't like it, but we're going to go live with it. Instead, it's safe to refactor because you've got the test to say, you did a good job or you suck, make it better. And that aids you because you're designing with the interfaces. You don't actually have to create some of the concrete implementations. You inject the interfaces that might be your MongoDB backend or your RDS backend. But because you're using the interfaces, it allows you to design the applications you want. And with test-driven development, once the test is 
green and it's been refactored, you stop. There's no need to add more functionality. No syntactical sugar needs to be added to this code and it stops you gold plating. No talk could be complete without me actually being able to show you how to do this. And this is a very simple module. It's a disclaimer. There's going to be some code in here, which I'm not proud of, but it was purely to show in a couple of slides how you can implement test-driven development tomorrow in your project. So MageConf got um, emailed by a company called Paymate Limited. They want to be able to offer par payment for goods. The good news is that they're going to deal with the payment stuff outside of Magento, so we don't need to worry about the checkout. They only need us to work on the product details page, and they want our module to be able to take the price of the product. If it's under $50, then they want to be able to show that it can be broken out into two monthly payments. If the product is under $200, then it can be broken out into four monthly payments, and any product over $500, it can't be split at all. It's exempt from this module. So to start with, we're going to build a module in Magento. We spoke about ports and adapters, so you're probably wondering, like, where are they going to live? Are we going to have a source namespace? Where's that going to be? Well, for this example, we're going to create a traditional M2 module in app code paymate split, but we're going to create a second namespace inside of it called split. So the business logic is all going to live in there. That's where your ports and all the port code lives. Your adapters, that's all the Magento code, that lives on the right-hand side. So we start by creating a folder inside of app code paymate split called test. That's going to house our different types of testing, be it integration or unit. So create the folder test unit with a split cost provider test.php. That's the test case that we're going to run. And if you look back to the diagram of the red green refactor, the first thing we need to do is create a very tiny test that fails. So the easiest test that we can do in PHP unit is test if the class is initializable. So we create public function test split code provider can be initiated. And we use the PHP assertion library of assert instance of. So we pass in the first, which is what we expect it to be. And then we create a new instance of the class that we're wanting to test to see if it actually was that. It's important to remember that you extend the PHP unit framework test case. And there are two ways of creating tests in PHP unit. You can prefix the function with test, or you can use dot block annotations with at test, and the function then will just be split code provider can be initiated. So we run PHP unit from the command line, passing in the bootstrap, give it the path to the test, and I like to use hyphen hyphen color just so that it adds a red or a green. That fails. So there's no surprise there. We've actually not wrote any production code. It's telling us that our split cost provider class doesn't exist. Great, let's fix that. Let's write again just enough code to make it pass. So we write the class. It's an empty class that all it does is allow it to be initiated. And our test goes green. You can see there that it can be initiated. I'm using the test docs um, parameter to add the nice ticks. And we've got our first passing test. Now let's make it fail again. This time we're going to actually look at the payment and price and how many splits we can get. So in our test splitting small price up, that's products under $50, we create a new instance of the split cost provider. And then on that provider, we're going to call a method which we think makes sense, which is get payment splits from price. And we pass into that an integer. This time our assertion is that we expect a array back we're expecting it to be two items based on the splits that it says. So when we call the get payment splits from price, we expect it to return as an array of two. And that's what we're asserting against. This time, PHP unit tells us a bit more. It now tells us that the method get, split, get payment splits from price doesn't exist. So let's make it exist. But again, we're only writing the tiniest amount of code to make sure this works. So we're hard coding it. If price is less than $50, then return a new array object with two split values inside of it. That makes the test pass. It's not production code, but that's where the refactoring is going to come into play. Now let's make another test fail. Now we're going to work on the median price. So it's exactly the same code again, except this time we're passing into the method $50 and we expect that the account should be for four. So we should get four 
variables in our array. It fails again, which is no surprise. We hard coded that if price is less than $50, just return an array of two. So it's telling us now that that's not gonna work. So we need to add an else statement. Still simple code that we're working with just to make sure that it passes. So if it's less than 50, return two items of the array. If it's anything else, return the four items. But at this point, when just passing around integers, we now need to refactor it. And to do that, we actually want to be able to use our product object from Magento in our class. We don't want to rely on the live database, live data. We want to mock it. That's a concept of test-driven development where you create a virtual or a mock object. And to do that in PHP unit, we just create the setup function. And we use their helper, create mock, and you pass into that the full class definition. What that does behind the scenes is when the test suite runs, it creates a virtual object of the product so that we can use it in our code and be safe in not having to go to the database or set up fixtures. Now to make that mock useful, we're going to use a spy on it. And the spy is the third line that you can see there. What we say to the mock is that anytime anybody calls get price on you, you're going to return back to me 10. So it's this product method. So I'm calling this method get price. You will return to me 10. That's how we use spies. And that means that when we then go back to our get payment splits from price method, we can then just pass in this product get price exactly like we would do in Magento. We can then assert that the count for a price less than 50 is two and our assert count works again. Now this is great. We've got some refactoring done there. But so far, we've not shown anything groundbreaking. We've not shown any Magento integration. Now I'm going to show you a block, and this is the code that I'm not proud of, but I just used the registry just to highlight how it can work. So we create a block class, and inside of its constructor argument, we pass in the split cost provider. We then create a function that our view block can use, which is show product price splits. And then that get payment splits from price where we were passing the mock and previously the integer value. We now just pass the registry that's got the current product in there. But the problem exists now that we've got our unit testing that tests the pure objects, but there's nothing now making sure that it's going to work in Magento. So we use BHAT. BHAT's more the behavioral driven development framework, but we're going to use it to do our integration testing. With BHAT, you create a feature file and the feature starts with its feature definition. Allow customers to see available split prices. Uh, as a store owner, I want to be able to see a smaller price chunk. And we create a scenario called products under $50 show two splits. Given I'm on a product details page, then I should see $50. It might be how it work. Um, sir, James, James, for interrupting you, just wanted to remind you that there is five minutes uh, left before the end of the presentation. Thank you. Perfect. Oh, that's fine. So we create a bhack.yaml file. We use the mink extension where we give it a base URL, set up some sessions so that Selenium can work, and we create a suite so that we can keep our product integration tests separate from our checkout or our admin. I've wrote no more code, right? This slide goes from the one that you just saw where I wrote the bhack.yaml, now into the command line where I ran dot vendor bin bhack. And behind the scenes, Selenium ran in the background, it checked the HTML, and it found that I actually had a new block that had been injected that showed the $50. Now, some people think that Selenium's slow, and I want to show you, this isn't sped up, this isn't real time. This was the morning that I recorded this. I run BHAP, it starts to talk to Magento, and it found the page with the $50 on there. So it is really quick if you use BHAP properly. And to do that, you need to use two Magento extensions. One is the Magento BHAT extension that allows you to use Magento objects in BHAT. The second one is the Magento in it in case you want to set any configuration values. Now that our tests are passing, it's now the time where you would actually refactor that. Make sure that there's no if else statement. Make sure that you keep running the tests. Make sure that it works. You've got your integration that you can run quickly. You've got your unit test that you can run quickly and you can make it actually use the product objects, make it do something more than just hard-coded values. The integration test is always going to run by Selenium, 
And the feature context file is the powerhouse. That's why I didn't have to write any code because the feature context extended mink. Now it, it is slower than unit tests. The more you add, the more complex it gets, the slower it's going to run. But it can be optimized using the BHAP plugins. And just to give you an idea of what we did there, it was PHP unit looking into our core domain, our class, and BHAP was responsible for looking out of our class back into Magento. Now, it wasn't a really simple example, but it's real easy to get set up in your teams to work on this. And the way that I'd recommend you to do it is the same way that we do at Shiro Commerce. Have code cutters once a week. That's half an hour of your time, once a week, where you do deliberate practice. Practice the split payment provider, writing it in different ways and then delete it and throw it away. But keep practicing. You're not gonna get into a project tomorrow and be able to use this, but really do practice. The nicop has got an awesome Kata series on YouTube. Definitely go and watch them because that guy has got so much knowledge and the Katas are amazing to watch. And the big favor that I need everybody that's watched this talk to do is to follow Fabian Schmangler on Twitter. He's been writing a test-driven development book and it is amazing. I got early access to it and it blew my mind. So we need this guy to finish that book, write a second book, write a third book, do videos. It's only going to make us as Magento developers a lot better. And these guys are pioneering what we can do with test-driven development for Magento. And with that, I want to say a massive thank you again to MageConf and to all of you for giving up some time on your weekend to watch the talk. I'm always available to talk via Twitter, via Slack, via email, whatever that might be. I want to help you in your testing journey and make sure that we all make our code and Magento a better place. So thank you all. Thank you, James. That was a great talk indeed. And we do have here and I will read it. Can testing only with acceptance tests is, oh, I'm sorry, is, is enough to ensure quality for a customer? It's a very good question. Um, we started at Shiro Commerce purely doing acceptance testing because, yeah, it, it's, it's a large investment in your time. Now, if you go back to does it add value to the client? Yeah, it does. Like, it's making your code better. You've got somebody doing acceptance testing to make sure that it does what it needs to do. It's so much better than having no testing. And what I like is that that gets you buy-in from the client and the business. You've got something that you can run. Maybe it's not completely automated, but it's you know, Ghost Inspector or a Excel spreadsheet that you're running through to make sure that it always works. So it's not going to give you the design abilities and the modular architecture, but it's definitely so much more responsible and better for the client than doing no testing at all. So start with acceptance, then go down into integration testing, look at BHAT, look at code section. And then once you've got that working, that more automation, then jump into the unit testing for the new module that you build. It'll take time, but you'll definitely value it in the long run. Thank you. Let me check the chat if there are any other questions. I guess we still have some time. So in case you have any questions, feel free to type them down in chat. I mean, the testing frameworks that I definitely recommend people to start looking at are the Cypress.io especially if you don't have any unit testing experience or you want to get into testing, but you're not quite sure. Cypress is incredibly fast. Um, it does mean that you need to know some JavaScript, but nowadays that's just part of our job. But I would recommend look at um, cypress.io, start to get that running against the pages and just really iterate, do the code cutters. Um, you'll enjoy it. There is one more. Is there any PHP dependency for BHAT? There isn't, no. Um, thankfully, you can use the latest BHAT3.star, and that'll work perfectly fine with Magento 2.4. Um, likewise, for the two 
extensions they're now compatible with magento 2.4 as well so out of the box b heart will just doesn't know anything about magento that's not got any hard dependency on php versions or mage versions and then the moment you install the bex magento in it and the bex magento um module they do work on 2.4 and you shouldn't get any problems one more great question from Giancarlo Perez regarding the, the behead and MFTF. Why do you use behead and not MFTF? It's personal preference. So um, I used to work at Invica with the creator of PHP spec and Behat, and I just became so comfortable with using behavioral driven development. So having the features files represent business conversations and business values just made me feel so much more comfortable with that but the magento test framework is phenomenal it, you can do a lot with it and it's xml and fixtures all of its architecture is really really good it was just for me that learning behat is just something that can, comes natural to me i like um, having the conversation with the client creating the feature file whereas mtf does do that, but it hides it away in the XML files. But it, it's definitely a fantastic tool. I recommend more people to get involved in that open source project and help the team like, contribute to it because it's the backbone of Magento. Thank you. I guess we have, oh, there is one more and I guess it will be our last question. So can you share the two links for the extension necessary for Magento and Behead integration? Yep, I'll share them on Twitter, um, but also share in the chat as well. All right, I guess uh, that was the last question for this session. Hope you guys enjoyed the session. I guess it was great indeed. And once again, I would like to that we do record all, all the sessions and they will be available on YouTube within the next week. In case you didn't get the answer to your question, feel free to find James today during the networking time or at the chat rooms. Once again, thank you, James, and have a great time. Thank you. Take care, all. Bye-bye.